Hello everyone and welcome back to Art a la Carte and in this video I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to draw a wolf face and two, I want to talk about a little bit later in this video the top three reasons I, at least I personally as an artist, will fail at a drawing. You might find some interesting points on that if you find that maybe your pictures are not turning out the way you want them. So stay tuned to the second half of this video for that. But first let's get into the actual setup of this drawing, which I'm gonna do as much as possible in re real time and not go into time lapse. Okay, so let's get into the actual drawing of this wolf head. So the first thing I'm going to do is to block in my shapes. And these are just gonna give me a general idea of where everything fits together and help it be in the right proportion. So for the wolf head itself, I'm gonna draw a kind of flattened oval shape and then I'm going to divide that shape from top to bottom and this is going to be the center line of the wolf's head and you'll notice it's going to be a little bit slanted and that's because I want the wolf's head to be a little bit slanted like it's cocking its head to one side. After that I'm going to divide that shape in, in almost half again. You'll notice the line is a little bit closer to the center line and that's going to be kind of where the eyes are and then I'm going to divide that oval shape in half almost equally but maybe a little bit lower so that gives me the kind of the outline of the head now for the nose and the muzzle i'm going to draw kind of a circle shape for the nose and then i'm going to wrap a u shape underneath that and then i'm just going to block in the ears which are kind of these rounded shallow triangles that are kind of come out kind of in between the center and eye line and then wrap all the way around almost to the edge of the circle so here we have a very roughed out look to our wolf. And now we can begin to kind of scratch in some of the details. So I'm gonna place in the eyes and kind of figure out how I want the nose. And this is just gonna really be you looking at reference photos and how you want to draw them. If you need some more detail on certain things, I have other videos that I go into more detail like how to draw a wolf eye, you can check that out. But you're just gonna to begin to work in this process. So a couple things you might want to look for is when you're drawing in the nose to kind of yeah, kind of pull in that nostril shape which is going to be a little bit of a kind of square or block shape and then to bring in the muzzle underneath it and I usually have the top lip kind of have this almost really shallow W look so it kind of comes up a little bit in the middle and then the bottom jawline is just a very shallow U shape underneath that. Now at any time during this tutorial or any of my tutorial videos, you find that maybe I'm going too fast or it, you're not caught up, you can hit that pause button and catch up. Or what I like to do when I'm watching a tutorial or instructional video is to watch the whole thing first and then go back and actually draw along with it. That way I know all the steps kind of ahead of time. For the wolf's kind of body, the neck and shoulders, I'm going to very lightly kind of outline that out. You're not going to get into a lot of detail with that um, simply because the wolf's coat and fur is so thick it kind of wraps around it and it doesn't allow for a lot of distinction. Once you have everything placed in the way that you want it then you can erase your guidelines and begin to add the detail. At this point it's just now beginning to build in those details. And this is where I'm going to get into talking about the top three reasons that when I go to start a piece and I want it to be a finished piece, the top three reasons why that piece will fail on me. First, let me tell you that every single artist fails at art. Usually you only see their finished pieces. A few brave artists will show you work in progress or show you their failed pieces. A fail doesn't mean it's a bad drawing. It just means that it doesn't match what the artist sees in their head. So when an artist says, oh, this picture didn't turn out, and you look at it and go, oh, yes, it did, it just means that what the artist was trying to convey wasn't conveyed. And I get that a lot. Probably only about one out of 10 drawings that I start actually turns into something. And I've often wondered, why is that? So the last couple of months, I've really been keeping an eye on my drawings and really trying to categorize when I discard a piece or give up on a piece, what was the main cause of that? So here are the top three reasons that happens. Now, while I give these top three reasons, I'm gonna speed this up into um, time lapse so that you guys can see the coloring process on this. And then at the end of the top three reasons, I'm gonna talk about what I did for the coloring. Okay, so here we go, top three reasons. Number one is I didn't have the right supplies 
to do it. I didn't have the right art tools. This is a very rare occasion. I am not an advocate for having the top-notch art supplies out there. I feel if you have paper, pencil, something to color with, you can create anything. But there are times that when I draw something, I can't do what I want to because I don't have the right supplies. If you look at my Copic sketchbook, there was a couple of drawings in there that I didn't finish because I didn't have the right colors that I wanted to do. So um, if I don't ever get those colors, that will be a failed picture. So that could be it. Maybe you don't have the right tools. Maybe you want to do a painting, but you don't have the right type of paints, or you don't have a thin enough brush to get the, the line stroke that you want. Maybe you, you want to, to do uh, an illustration and you go to ink it in and your ink pen is dried out. There's a lot of different reasons. It's rare that that is, would be the reason that I fail at a drawing, but that is sometimes a reason that I don't have the right supplies. So when I go to start a piece, it's always good to double check and make sure that I have all the tools that I need. Simple, similar to when you're, you know, build, building a cake, <laughs> I built her a cake or something. When you bake a cake, you want to make sure that you have eggs and milk and all the things that you're going to need to make it before you start. Okay, number two, I don't have enough practice at something. So if I'm going to draw something that maybe I've never drawn before, or it's a bit challenging, and I decide I'm going to draw it in a really technical or difficult way, it has a really high possibility that it will fail on me because I haven't practiced that enough. Before a dancer goes to the recital and dances her amazing solo performance, that dancer will spend hours and hours and hours practicing every step of it. And as an artist, we need to do that as well. Don't think that, oh, I really want to draw this picture of a wolf. I've never drawn a wolf before. I've never drawn a dog before, but I'm going to make this amazing picture. And then when it doesn't turn out that you think, oh, I can never do it. I tried. And don't think that when you try to draw it, that you're going to get it two times after drawing it or three times after drawing it or four times after drawing it. You're going to have to practice at it. And I encourage you that if you have not watched some of my older videos, that you go back. Go back to the first couple of our a la carte videos and take a peek at them. And you'll see that even in my art, the last three years has improved. And it should. An artist should never be stagnant in their skill level. Um, should never be satisfied with where they are, whether they are just a beginning artist or have been an artist for 20, 30 years. We should always, as an artist, be wanting to push ourselves to attain a better skill set. So when you go back to the beginning videos of Art à la carte and you see them, yeah, they're okay, but can I do better now? I sure hope so. I sure hope that I can draw a better horse head now than the very first how to draw a horse head video. I know for a fact that I can record them better. The video quality on my, on my first videos is horrendous compared to what I can do now. So when you go to tackle something and you find that you are failing at it, just start practicing that and don't take the whole thing on at once. If you want to draw this wolf, work on the eyes, work on the ears, draw a ton of just setups for the head and get the head shape right. Just fill pages in your sketchbooks of wolf heads. Do it really fast. Don't try to get in that detail yet. And then work on, you know, the fur detail and, and, and all that and build yourself up until you feel like you're at that level that you can tackle that drawing. So that's number two. The third reason that I find that my pictures fail, that they don't turn out, is um, one that I struggle with all the time. And that itself is time. I do not like to put a ton of time into a picture. And when I mean a ton of time, I mean over a one day work period. If I can't start and finish a picture in one day, oh, it drives me crazy. Because I find I, I can lose inspiration over a piece if I you know, work on it halfway and it finishes it and I go to sleep and I get up the next day, I have a new inspiration for a new piece. And it's really hard for me to jump right back into that piece and continue working on it. I see some artists and they spend days and weeks, even some people spend months or years on a piece. I could never do that. I mean, I should, but I see to myself, I, I, I can't do that. It takes so long. I want to see the final product right now. And so I'll, I'll hurry through it. I will, instead of taking the time to put in the intricate details that I want to achieve in that picture, I see that a lot in my art students when they're 
coloring a piece, they'll just run the crayon or the color pencil over the area just to kind of indicate that, yeah, that part is going to be blue, but it's more white than blue right now. So if you find yourself rushing through a piece, that could be one of the reasons that it it will fail is that you don't take the time to really put the effort into it. Now, not every piece that you work on is going to have to take you three days, four days, a week, a month to do, even a day. This piece here, I pushed myself to really, really work on it. And when I got, got tired or you know, got impatient, instead of just rushing through it, I would just stop. I would stop what I was doing and I would then come back to it a little bit later. And it took me all day to finish this piece, which you can see it's, it's not a huge piece, but it took me several hours to do this. Normally this should take me maybe an hour to do something like this, but I pushed myself and I would take breaks and then I would come back. So it, it took me all day. I worked on it all day uh, yesterday painting this piece. I took bunches of different breaks. I, anytime I thought I'm just going to rush through this and kind of, oh, for step, you know, forget that step. I would make myself stop, go take a break, go work on something else and then come back to it. And I really, really like how this piece turned out. It's, um, it's one of my favorite pieces that I've created recently. So I really, really like it. I like how the colors turned out and everything. And so, yeah, so those are my three reasons for me personally that, um, I feel that my art will fail. Um, maybe some of you guys find that true in your own art journey and maybe and maybe that will help you to go, oh, okay, I need to slow down or, oh, I need to practice a little bit more or I need to get that supply that I really need. Or if there's another reason that you feel that your art uh, fails, let me know in the comments below and that might encourage some of us. When we talk about our failures and successes as, as artists, it encourages us, it helps us find solutions to those situations. And you also find that you're not alone in this, that there are artists everywhere that are facing the same thing that you are. Let me quickly go over what I did with this piece, just in case you want to follow along. What I did is I first covered it in a rainbow of watercolors. When I was looking at my reference photos, I noticed that, you know, the wolf isn't just one or two colors. It was almost like there was multiple colors. So I first laid it in and then I was going to go over just really lightly with some color pencils and add some textures. And as you can see, I am getting crazy with, with color pencils. And by the time I get done, you can barely see the watercolors. So I don't know if that was redundant of me or not. But it was a fun process. And this piece actually really inspired a different piece that I want to work on that I have in my mind. But I felt it was important that I pushed myself to take the time to make this intricate detailing with the color pencils and just layering and layering and layering, not just one color, but multiple colors. You'll see at the end, I kind of line up all the color pencils that I used. So a tip with that is to keep all of your pencils super, super sharp. So you'll see I often will reach my hand up and I'm sharpening the pencil, even though it's not super dull, it's lost that super sharp point that's going to give me that indication of fur. Also making sure that your fur isn't in a, in a pattern, like the lines aren't all lined up perfectly, that you put some variances in that is going to help as well. A more realistic pattern to your wolf fur. If you want a little bit more detail on watercolor painting or in color pencils, check out the playlist that I put in the description box below for watercolor 101 and color pencil 101. Of course, if you have any questions about this, you can let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in this piece, I have it for sale on my Etsy shop. You can jump over there. Me, if you're brand new to this channel, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I have a really fun one coming up this Saturday, so don't miss it. So until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye bye. So I decided to sketch up a cute baby duck because what's better than a cute baby duck? Nothing. Well, maybe, you know, I had to choose something. So I thought a baby duck would be awfully cute.